is the Rebel Author Podcast, where we talk about books, business, and occasionally bad words. Hello, Rebels, and welcome to episode 26 of The Black Heron. I hope you enjoy the conversation. Well, hello, Sasha Black. Hello, darling. How are, <laughs> How are you? you? Yeah, no, you first. How are you? Oh, I just woke up not long ago, so I'm still quite dumb. So okay. we shall rely on you to be the sparkling personality. Okay, <laughs> I'm all right. Um, I, I did have a sudden horrendous realisation. I thought I had two weeks until my book deadline. And I don't. <laughs> what do so, you have? Less than that. So it's oh. it's um Wednesday next week. Oh my god. <laughs> so it's gonna speaking. be late. <laughs> oh. I'm not gonna get it done. There's no way. I have still got like forty thousand words to write. Um oh, yeah, you are not gonna be able to do that physically. Your body no. won't be able to do that. And I've still got to edit most of the book. So I made a big book of the book. And so in a trilogy, especially a romantic one, typically the last book, you sort of have the dark night of the soul at the end of book two. And then you kind of resolve the um, romantic relationship, <laughs> um, dark night of the soul early in book three. And then everything's about the external bad, right? The big bad. And that's what I'd outlined but that wasn't what I was writing. <laughs> I don't know. So I was like, I was like, Ellie, what is wrong with my book? Um, and she was like, well, Sasha, you are trying to write internal conflict after they've resolved it all. And I was like, Ugh. and that's exactly what I was trying to do because mm. that's what I'd spent, you know, 230,000 words doing. Um that so, would be yeah, a basically. hard thing to stop. I've never, I've, I've written many series, but I've never written a continuing series with the same characters. So I would have no idea how to do that. And, and especially with your characters who thrive on angst and drama. Oh my gosh. I just went back to police code in my head. The, uh, the police code for the agency I worked for a million years ago for fighting for like, you know, just like it was 415. And we would say, oh, they're 415ing. And I was going to say that your books are built on their 415ing. You know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love that. I literally, that's going to be our code word now. <laughs> okay, yes, we used to use that for um, yeah. in home 415. So, oh, I had such a yeah. 415 last night with Lala. <laughs> love it. I literally love it. That is my new favorite word and I am well, stealing it. Can I, so, can, yeah. I, can I suggest something terrible and just feel free to 415 with me? Um is it because maybe they have a little bit more internal drama to work out? I mean, is it there? So, um, no. <laughs> Once it's done, it's done. But um, there is internal conflict, but not between the two of them. And I can't say too much more because yeah, of, yeah. But there is there's something else going on that's going to come to light that's been threaded through that nobody should know yet so cool. that, there is still internal conflict but not between the not between the couple right. um so anyway as soon as as soon as she said it because I was like I kept saying things that were like oh you know I don't understand why there's not enough conflict like there's not enough going on in this scene and blah, blah, blah. and like she was like oh Sasha and it was literally and as soon as she said it's because you're trying to write internal conflict when it's an external conflict but I was like and I was like, I know exactly what the problem is. I know exactly how to fix it. Um, Fantastic. And so, yeah, it is. But I've had to completely diverge from my normal book process. So normally I only draft and then I only edit. Mm. And what I had to do was like literally bullet point skeleton my way to the end um, and then go all the way back to the beginning. So I'm in hell because I hate editing oh because uh, you're revising now, before the book is done ah, because ooh, i'm revising yeah. before the book is done exactly worst but but when i get to the end this time that's it, it goes to the editor so right. that's what i'm trying to hold on to um that it will be done um it just so happens that i've got to write about double that i normally do so i always normally add about 20k in edits so i'm just doubling the amount that i've got to write in edits so anyway you I won't do doing it. this again <laughs> How much does that again. screw up the rest of your schedule? Are you okay? Um, I had a massive tantrum on the same day that I spoke to Ellie and I wiped off the entire of my whiteboard. So I have no schedule. 
at all. I'm so proud of you. That's just glory in this moment. <laughs> I know that you worship your whiteboard and that is what I'm really together is. on some days. <laughs> yeah. But th- here's the thing. You've already proven yourself to be a person who you just make books, you make books, you write books, you make them and it's okay to clear it. Did it, did you feel a little bit of relief Um, besides, you know, some, you know, agony, but a little bit. I felt, um, a mix of emotions because I'd been pushed to the point where I was like, if I don't clear the schedule and give myself the breathing space to like have a week off and read, um, I think I'm going to not want to work. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's, a, that is an alarm bell to me. It's so much um, worse than blowing deadlines and moving calendars, much worse. Exactly. So I don't know that it was relief in that it felt right so but what I did say to Ellie is that I can't live for too long without a schedule or a plan so we and so at the end of our session we booked in a planning date for after I have finished drafting so I will then have a schedule like you know by by the end of the second week in October I'll I'll have a plan again but basically I just think that I uh might have unrealistic timelines in my head for everything. <laughs> we all knew that. Uh, we all knew that, uh, I, including including you knew that. But I also love the idea of getting Ellie's help with a little bit of co- cognitive realism while you're yeah, while you're scheduling I, the next book. Well, and so this is the interesting thing. Um, she, so I work with um, what I'm calling my operations director now. I don't know if we've had this discussion. No, please tell me. You're ops okay, director. so um, I'm working. I know, right? I'm working with a lady who is more than just a virtual assistant. She is literally is this, like. Is this the one who was doing your email? Have you like brought her in for more? Because she sounded yes. like a bloody genius. She is fucking amazing. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So she is doing everything like I have offloaded so much it's unbelievable um she's literally um anything that that is possible for me not to do I give to her I start with can Petra do this and if she can't do it then I do it Mm -hmm. um which is a very different way of thinking um Oh my god, we have we have also Kickstarter to talk about, but um, I know, I know, and and, there and, is so and much. I'm I'm quite boring, but I do have a new book that I'll tell you about. But um, oh my god, that's but, yeah. exciting! <laughs> but I want to hear all this. Okay, so I always thought I didn't want to manage people, um, but I think I'm very happy to manage the right people, mm. and I'm especially ma- happy to manage one person who then goes and manages everybody else. So I don't want a flat structure. Yeah. If I'm if I have to have a team, I don't want a flat structure. I want a hierarchy because I don't want to deal with with the minutia. And you're doing it exactly right because you are not actually managing her. You are giving her tasks and it sounds like she is perfect at managing herself and everything oh, that God, she does yeah. for you. You don't have to stand over her shoulder and make sure she's doing nope. it, you know, like nothing not none of that. No, exactly. And the, and and she is solving problems before I've even thought of them. And then I'm like, oh, Anna, she's like, yeah, I've already done it. And I'm like, wait, what? I'm like, I only just had the thought. So she is absolutely <laughs> incredible. Um, but also she kind of like managed the Kickstarter. Like she's like commissioning covers. Like, don't get me wrong. Like I am pulling the concept and mm-hmm. giving all the feedback on the covers. So of I course. still get that creative control, but she's dealing with the emails and the back and forth and the, you know, she will tweak things in vellum and she'll, you know, so it's, it's, it's been a much longer process of outsourcing than I thought it was, but actually um, this is how I scale because she is able to do so many big, exciting projects that I want to do that I just do not have the capacity for. Um, And so it's like, now I can come up with all of these ideas and I'm like, I want to do this. I want to do this. I want to do this. And and I can actually do it, but like, I don't have to do the doing. She can do the doing. So it's incredible. Um, It was terrifying, um, uh, like agreeing to the number of hours because it's almost like paying somebody what I used to earn. Oh Um, my gosh. So that's actually terrifying to me. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, yeah, so that's been, that's been kind of like a growth point as well. Um, but yeah, I feel so much freer and so excited for all the possibilities of things that we can do, but it has been a very long, slow process of like learning how to 
let go, learning what I can outsource, learning how to work so closely with somebody and even learning that I can, because for a long time, I didn't think I'd be able to have somebody this close in my business. Um, I didn't think I'd want it. I didn't think I'd like it. Um, but what I do like is the free time to work all day on my book. I didn't realize how much that's all I want to do. I don't, I don't like, don't get me wrong. I want to do strategy. Mm -hmm. I, I like some elements of marketing. I don't, I don't want to create graphics. I don't want to schedule shit. I don't want to do any of that stuff, but I want to, I want to come up with the hooks. I want to come up with the concepts. I want to come up with, you know, I don't mind TikTok. Um, but yeah, so it's been really interesting learning what I like. And is she doing the other social medias? Or is that somebody else? So, so you I've have somebody a, else doing that. I've got, I've got yeah, yeah, I've got kind of a team. Yeah. So between them, they they manage literally everything. Like everything. It's amazing. <gasps> I, can, can I just stop for one second? I do really love doing this with you. Um, you say, <laughs> oh, I, I kind of have I kind of have a team. One and a half years ago, we'll, <laughs> we'll call it almost two, but not quite. It's like one and a half year. You were like, I might do a secret pen name. What I know. <laughs> I think it'll be a financial disaster, but I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> the worst decision I've ever made. <laughs> <laughs> and now, and I know I always bring you up short to remind you of that, but I think that's part of my job. It's just so it is, incredible. It is. Just like it's part of Petra's job to wrangle in me. Like she, I think she spends 90% of her time going, that's a great idea. Why don't we schedule that for 2026? <laughs> Between her and Ellie, if somebody is turning, yeah. tuning in for the very first time, they'll be very confused. Ellie is a coach that we both work with. Um, yes. does, so Ellie will actually, will she talk with you through your your plots then? This is something that I twigged while you said Ellie that. Ellie hand holds me through life. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, she was I, actually able I, to tell you that thing about the internal mechanism of your book. And I've never even considered using Ellie for that. Uh, I have never had somebody brainstorm with me about the book in a, in the way that she does. I book mm. in a session. Mm -hmm. I pay in it for an extra session before I'm I start drafting. This. And right, I talk yep. her through the whole plot. And she yep. she picks out any holes. That, and also, she like, what, what was the thing the other day? So there was this scene and I was so resistant and I skipped over it and I started writing other stuff. And I was like, Ellie, I can't write this scene. This scene's wrong. And she was like, no, it's not. And I was like... <laughs> And she was like, it's your competition. She was like, this character loses and quits in this scene. She was like, do you know how hard that's going to be for you to write? And I was like, oh. ah. you know, so she not only talks plot and understands story, but she does it from the, the framework of strengths. Oh, my it just goodness. It's unfucking believable. I will not start writing until I have spoken to her. And and I will also say for people who are wishing, oh, I wish I had an Ellie. You know, no, number one, you can get an Ellie. But um, no, she. I think she's I think she's booking now but um and number two even when she handholds you through it we we find surprises in our work no if if you get the stamp of approval from ellie and you give yourself the stamp of approval you will we will all still run into hair raising issues yeah, while we're writing our books that doesn't mean that it makes it easy no no not even yeah. close to easy bloody hell but over the years, there's lots of like tools that you pick up. And now I have like a literal checklist of, of tools in my toolbox. And I'm like, OK, um, have I used Mid Journey to create an image so that I can mm. see visually the scene? Right. Like if I can't write, I'm like, well, can you see the scene? Um, you know, so that's like my go to. Ellie's like, do you have your images? And I'm like, <laughs> you know, and she's like, mm -hmm. and do you then, do that you for know, every scene or just the scenes you're stuck on? Um, I do it for for lots of things at the beginning before I start writing. Mm -hmm. um, but invariably, you know, 30% of what I write is brand spanking new to me. <laughs> <laughs> Despite outlining. Um, and I will do it if I get stuck. Usually yeah. if I if I if I grind to a halt or I can't start a scene, my number one is do I have an image? Like mid journey is literally my best friend. Wow. I'm so grateful to Joe because I didn't realize how visual I am. And I would spend hours on Pinterest looking in coffee table books. I like the amount of money I've spent on coffee table books over the years. Looking for the right image instead of yeah. asking. Instead of just to asking create it for, for you. It. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if that would work you know, for me, a person with no interior, like visual. Oh my gosh, you have aphantasia. Yeah. We've not talked about I, this. <gasps> I don't think we ever have. I have the I have the almost F aphantasia. Like almost i can if you tell me to see an apple i'll see like a child's drawing of an apple that is wobbly in my head but i don't see so, anything else 
I see all Honey. words that are spoken always. It's called teletype synesthesia. As you are talking, I see every word. I have to see, I have to know where, how everything is spelled. I can't talk to a person without knowing the spelling of their name because it's constantly scrolling. And I'm constantly, I just found out that my, a really good friend, Stephen, is a V and not a PH. And my, he's not even a person to me anymore. I've always thought of him as a PH. I've got it. This is going to take years for me to recover from. But yeah, I can't, so Chloe can't see either? Chloe has very limited. It's so very limited. Yeah, I can see that. Very, little. very limited. She like might if she like shuts her eyes and thinks really hard about it, she yep. might sort of get a grey ish image, but pretty much nothing in it. Can you ask her is, something? Can we go side? Yeah. We're going to go sideways. Totally. Can you ask her? what her dreams are like, because I just woke up from a dream the other day and I realized that I always dream incredibly visually. And in this particular dream, I was looking at this scroll work gate that had rust on it. And I can almost see it in my head right now, but I was, I was seeing it so clearly. And I'm like, how can I do that if I have almost a fantasia? And then I Google, it's a different part of your brain. Your no. mind's eye that can imagine something is not the Chloe. part of your brain that sees during a dream. No way. I did not know that. We have a question for you. What I no, don't come on screen. What are your um <laughs> don't come on screen? You're naked. Yes. Hello. Not naked. Hello, Chloe. You're on you're on the air. She probably can't She's hear me. She's in her PJs. She's in her PJs. What are your dreams like? Can she see images? Can you see images in your dreams? And are they in colour? I don't think they're in colour. They're not in colour, okay. Mm. But do you see images? She's intellecting very hard here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't dream very often, though, do I? Yeah, so she's saying it's she hard dream for very people often. who don't remember. I dream vividly every night, and I, I sleep so lightly that they're always right there, although she sleeps lightly. So ask her to keep an eye on this, please. Okay, so we, we would love an answer the next time that you have a dream. Okay. The listeners will want to know. They'll oh, want closure. We are actually recording, yeah. And please tell her hello. And uh, 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 Rachel says hello. <laughs> you don't want to see me in my pajamas. I mean, I I like seeing you I in like pajamas. Tell but... her to pop her head in and wave at me. <laughs> she's she's our, so our, uh, our, our listeners are so tolerant because we we're know. not going to edit this out. I'm not going to edit that, that out. That's in. <laughs> thank you, Chloe. All right. <laughs> Um, Rachel, so thank you. Okay, so to go back to that, I wonder if mid-journey making images would help or hurt because usually what happens is if I do a Pinterest board, I never look at it again. And if I look at it, it doesn't mean much to me. You know, oh, that's it, interesting. So well, I only look at it and then I'm gone. It's right, not like it's I hold a, it there. I just look yeah. at it. And then usually what happens is, um, okay, so I look at the image and it's not, and this is what I find so funny. This is why Joe and I are quite similar. Joe is so location-based. Um, and she goes traveling so much, as do I, because if I cannot see the setting, I cannot write the action. So for mm. me, 90% of what I create on Mid Journey is a setting image. The <laughs> other 10% is a people image and I create characters. So it's always like, what does this location look like? If I can see the location, I can plot the action in the location. So that's what I do. I love this idea for setting because I can never see anything, anything that my characters are doing. So 90% of my books are people talking in rooms that don't exist. It's all just heads in space. And it, and, but really a nice thing about my process now is that I know that, and I don't worry about it in a first or a second draft. It's like a, it's a later draft for me to go in and add all setting. And I just sit there with a the thesaurus and I look up what's in a setting and I put it, I put it in and I build it around it, but that's a pass for me. Um, okay. Sorry. Going into the weeds here. When you use mid journey, are you using, um, Oh, what is it? Not Slack, but the other one. The uh, Discord. Are you using Discord to build it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because the only AI I've, um, I've managed to use got... is with ChatGPT, Dolly, because it's easier. Oh, uh, I I'm like, <laughs> as much as I love Midjourney, I'm a bit of a tech phobe. Not tech phobe, but like I find it very difficult to learn new things. So I've got a patron. They are incredible, um, and they are able to like edit images in the AI and they create oh, cool. like all of these wonderful like steampunk type stuff, but they know how to like iterate them and change them. And I just right. I can't, like, I'm like, ah, no, I can't. Like when I'm I iterating, I get monsters. Yeah. 
Yeah, I don't even know how to iterate. So that, I mean, like, yeah, I, I wish I did know, um, yeah. but I don't. And I'm sure it's something I'm capable of learning, but I haven't had the time, headspace or capacity to learn it. So I'm very base. I'm a basic bitch when it comes to mid journey. I'm just like, <laughs> and if I don't get the right image, instead of tweaking it, I just write the prompt again. <laughs> That's all I know how to do. <laughs> That's fair. Okay. Now we've wandered everywhere. Let's go back to, um, so you have a plan or you have, and you're going to meet with Ellie. You're going to do the plot for the, you know, you always, that's what you do. Oh, Um, oh, and you're going to meet with Ellie to do plot out basically your whole schedule. Yeah. 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 Cause I know what I'm writing next. I just, um, not talking about that one here yet. Well, I'll tell you, but yeah, that old chestnut. Um, yeah. So I don't know, (laughs) like the year is wide open apart from Vegas. I am going to Vegas. And when is Vegas? Um, October? November. November. Okay. I'm going for a short amount of time this time though. Okay. All right. Yeah, yeah, it was it was a lot last time. I, well, and it was a, about... an entire holiday with your family. That was no, no. Oh, Ve- you went Vegas to Vegas last went... time. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 I literally felt like I was there for seventeen years. <laughs> seventeen hours in Vegas feels like that. <laughs> literally, <laughs> a lot. Um, so yeah, I think that's. I think uh, that's... No, that's not all. Can you please tell me? Or actually, I'm going to walk. I'm going to walk listeners who who are not up on the on the Sasha thing through this thing where I got I got what (laughs) how many how many days ago how many days ago um well there's 13 days left and I think it was it started on the 16th so what day is it now the 23rd so it's a week today so it's a week today so one week ago today I got up it was like you know maybe 7 a.m and I think it was 8 a.m when I looked at my email and I had gotten an email at 4 a.m new zealand time that said (laughs) <laughs> Sasha Black's new Kickstarter had launched the NSFW lesbian vampire romance special editions. Cause I just brought it up. Why did that just cover that? Um, and I was like, I wonder, I wonder, you know, I wonder how it's doing. And I looked and it had blown past your, not your goal, which was remarkably low because you do it like I do. We're scared. We're not going to hit anything. Yep. Um, and you'd blown past everything you had done on the last Kickstarter. So I just pulled it up and I would like to tell you in New Zealand dollars, because New Zealand dollars are impressive. Your goal in New Zealand dollars, you'll have no way of knowing this, was $6,400. Okay. You are currently at, <laughs> let's say that again, your goal was $6,400. you are currently at $93,384. <gasps> and if you have a listener or a patron who lives in in or anywhere near Japan, have them send you a screenshot because you're in the millions now. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. I love currency conversion. <laughs> so can you please talk us, because this is super exciting. Can you please talk us through that day and your subsequent meltdown? Because I Marco polo would you and you were like, yeah. I'm dying. <laughs> yeah, I I gave myself an excitement migraine. Yes. Um, I'm, yes. Yeah, it was really bad. <laughs> I literally got a migraine. I get those. Yeah, I was got so excited. Um, I can't exactly remember what the meltdown was, um, but it was it was it was un- we blew through the whole of the last Kickstarter, which was twenty six thousand UK in ninety four minutes. Ninety four minutes. Yeah, That's 94 the point minutes. at which I check out for a few days. Just yeah, right. Done. I was like, yeah, I'm done. Like, <laughs> I don't know what else to do now. Um, and so it's funny because I've actually not been able to promote the Kickstarter for a few days just because I was so utterly gobsmacked and overwhelmed and shocked about what had happened. Mm-hmm. Um, and so now literally we've had the conversation today because it has like petered right right down and it does that in every campaign. But there are things you can do to encourage and, you know, get a couple more backers right, here, there and everywhere. Right. So um, we're back on the back on the train now. Um, but yeah, I mean... I was not expecting that. I knew it. I knew, I knew we'd gathered a lot of followers. So before it started, it had seven hundred and eighteen. Holy cow! Followers. Yeah, and I didn't know that that was loads. But Joe's reaction told me that that was loads because I was like, yeah. Oh, "Yeah, we got like blah blah blah," and she was like, "Wait, what?" And I was like, "Oh, okay." Um, because last time we'd had two hundred and something, and me being me, obviously had been following a lot of the bigger Kickstarters. So you know, Katie Roberts Kickstarter, and they had like you know four thousand followers. So I was like, yeah. "Oh, you know, it's like." So I was completely distorted. I obviously hadn't done enough research on what was a realistic amount of followers. So like one hundred that... is amazing for. A normal person. 
that 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 had well, been the first one had yeah yeah Yeah. so the first one had like 280 or 290 incredible so yeah when we blew past 500 i was like "Mm, okay this could be like this could be something but then you never know right because they actually have to convert and they don't all convert so yeah we we I'm I don't know what to say. I just don't know what to say. I'm going to need an army of people to help with this one. Like when it comes to fulfillment, I'm going to need an army of people to help because you are going to need an army of people to help. And also you you have to get that. You cannot be in charge of this fulfillment. I mean, you can be in charge of it because you're the you're the ringmaster. But um, no, I'm not. You can't. (laughs) This is a Petra problem. It is a petrol problem. And this is why is. you are paying her so well, because this allows you to write. And I mean, and 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 again, we know how much of that 93,000 New Zealand you will get. It's, you know, it'll be less than half, but still a uh, freaking amazing. Thank you. you must Thank feel you. really, really good about that. I just feel numb mm-hmm. because it was like, you know, I, I, my, the goal was beat the last one. And I thought maybe it'd take a week to do that. And then when it did it in 94 minutes, I was just like, well, I don't know what the goal is. Now. Interesting. <laughs> as as a number one competition person, that must be, that must really put you on the back foot. You, you yeah. absolutely don't know what is good anymore. Like if you yeah. had made this amount on the last day, like you'd been under the last, you're under Leary last kickstart at, for 20 of the days and then you managed to creep over just by a dollar or two or maybe a hundred dollars on the last day you would have been flying yeah 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 Ah. so I had to like I've had to like reset so now it's like well we're at 43 it would be really good to beat 50 because you know that feels like um you know we've got two weeks left and that feels like a realistic sort of goal um do you change your stretch goals while you're in there do you do you have the stretch goal up to 50 I haven't checked up to 80 I, that perfect. wasn't right. That, yeah, that we yeah. didn't set them because yeah. um, we were like, well, let's let's just put the first two or three, and that's, then we'll, I think that's the right way yeah. to go. Yeah. Um. So I mean, that's a private goal, not like a. I mean, the public goal, obviously, fifty and eighty are up there for stretch goals, but yeah, privately, I'm like, I would really, really like to make fifty. Um. Yeah, it's just a very weird. Yeah, I don't know. Like, and then, and then, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I don't think I've been able to process it quite yet. Good. Then we're processing it a little bit right now, just by talking. Yeah, about that's it. why I'm stumbling flummoxed. and and struggling. Yeah, flummoxed, basically. Yeah, but we are like, I have talked nonstop. Tell me about your new book. <laughs> well, my new book. I need to make an appointment with Ellie. I need to make an appointment with Ellie to help me find some more hours in the day which don't exist because I am teaching so much right now and teaching does take a lot a lot of time and a lot of like management effort and I love doing it and it pays the bills but I need to finish the fix which I'm very close to doing which is the uh, recovery memoir and then I can push it off to my agent I finished the copy edits on seven miracles so that's done done forever I'll look at proof pages someday next year but I don't care um but then I told you a little bit about this on Marco Polo, but I went to this town Fanganui on a little writer's retreat and I was and I this is a woo-woo thing, so go with me here. I often recognize the places that will be incredibly important to me, like a ho- in a home way, when I, when I get there. Like, I have recognized every house we've ever lived in. You know, we'll look at, you know, when we were here, we looked at buying a house, look at, you know, looking at all the houses. And then I recognized the interior walls of this one. At our old home, I pulled up outside the house when we were going to look at this house, and I recognized the bird song. Um when I first started going to the recovery room, the 12-step meeting house that I first got sober in, I walked in and I looked down and I recognized the linoleum and I knew around the corner there'd be a stair- a crooked staircase and there and there it was. Like I recognized, I recognized these things. And when I got to Fanganui, I was like, I recognize this, this town and I'm just stomping around it, just walking around. And I, and I was like, I wonder if my mom ever lived here and I didn't know that. I know, are, are my family from here, even though this is the wrong island? Why am I feeling this way? And then I walked around this corner and this there was a painting of a woman on a mural on a wall. And I was like, who is that? And it didn't say, it just said the the artist's name. So I took a picture, took a picture from a million angles. I was just in love with her. She's sitting in front of, I didn't know if she was writing on a, on on paper. She was kind of facing 
a, a, you know, a thing that was tilted up or painting or weaving. It was really not the best mural I've ever seen, but I was enamored. And it turns out she was painting. And this is Edith Collier. I, I Google, I went back and I Googled the artist and I found out um, who this was, Edith Collier, who's the first modern painter of New Zealand, who was absolutely forgotten to time because there was this homosexual scandal at the time involving the mayor of Whanganui, who was a man who shot the man who said, I'm going to oust you, I'm going to out you as a homosexual. Um, and that man lived. And then Charles, the mayor went to prison and then was released, but was like, Charles Mackey, the mayor, was almost removed from the annals of time because of this homosexual sin that he did. And Edith, in the meantime, same town, Edith comes back from studying in Europe just a couple years after this happens. She presents her work at the gallery that Charles, the mayor, opened and is scathingly reviewed, possibly, probably, because she has these female nudes She's been learning in Europe. Nobody paints female nudes, especially in New Zealand, especially women. And then her father burns those nudes and she almost never works again. She does work a little bit. She doesn't go to her own openings. Um, she goes with her best friend up the coast and is, you know, painting the uh, uh, landscapes. But there's a lot of there's a lot of implied tragedy around both Edith and Charles. And what I want to do is show the fictional because I'm making this shit up, but show the fictional love that they had in their lives. Like Charles, Charles does get released from prison. He goes to Europe because that's part of his release. He can't come back. And I know that he falls in love in London because of who he leaves his will to. He is then shot on the streets by a Berlin sniper cop during some riots. But I want to I want to show like the moment when he's thinking of his love. And and Edith lives until she's in her almost 80s. She buys a black Oldsmobile in her 70s and a, and a house up the coast. And her best friend is still living in town near her. And I know that she's been loving you lately. You lately is her girlfriend's name. And well, so I want my main character to be to come into town and I, and somehow find the main character is going to have some kind of, you know, queer love story. And I want her to find the hidden nudes that Edith made for the rest of her life, maybe of Eulalie, the Eulalie series or something. I just, I just want to like explore. I don't know if it's going to be like a slightly ghosty, ghosty story or just straight up women's fiction slash lit. I don't know. Okay, so number one, this is the most input thing you have ever said to me. Um, just like the, the rabbit hole, oh, you just oh, took everybody the, down, right? The rabbit hole that you did not know existed and now you need more. I know, right? <laughs> um, number two, are you going to give them a happy ever after? All of them get a happy ever after. Okay, good. Um, and number three, I can't have write you read that the not. Yeah. Have you read The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo? No, I never have. <gasps> I know because oh, I don't. Okay, I tried okay, something okay, else okay. by her and I but, didn't like her writing. But I could. I'll, I'll try it. Can you, you listen yes. to audio? Yeah, yeah. Okay, listen to the audio because okay. it's written. Um, as you're talking, I'm like it. It's giving me Evelyn H Hugo vibes oh. because, and I will try not to give you any spoilers, but That's it's told right. past yeah. present. It is and, okay. I didn't know yeah. that. Yeah, and in the present, there is a journalist who is interviewing Evelyn, and then it, during those interview <sighs> sessions, it goes into her past, and then we get her past story all the way up to present day, and they're all connected. Like, if you don't love that book, I will be gobsmacked. <laughs> I will gobsmacked. I will get it and listen to it while I am stitching. That sounds wonderful. I, I think it will be great input for this kind of story. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. And maybe so even I, structural like inspiration yeah, well, for you. I need the help. I need the help. Um, I I love that idea. Thank you. So yeah, my brain is on fire. My brain is like in a full, I, I, it's so funny that you had, have said that because I had not thought about it as my number one input, number two intellection, but that's all I've been doing. I have like 42 pages of notes. Of I, there are, <laughs> there are three full books, two on Edith, one on Charles, and I've, I've read them and I've only been back for five days. Like I have, I no, I guess a week now, but I have read everything there is to read on these people and it's all connected. And I, okay, can I confess something? I, uh, I yeah. don't think I said this on my podcast. There's a little 
There's a little house. So the Sargent Gallery is what Charles built and and created. The Sargent Gallery, it holds all of Edith's works. And they have been closed for 10 years as they do this remodeling, revamp thing. They open on November 9th. I am a patron now at the gallery. Uh, I will be at the opening. Um, and there's this little house on the Sargent Gallery property. I'm going to be so embarrassed if anybody ever hears this who is actually in New Zealand and knows anybody. So nobody tell. But there's this little house and they have a residency. And I'm going to get a residency there. I'm going to oh live in that little God. house for six months. I love it. Um, and write about Edith at the Sargent. Like, I, I, and when I walked past the house, I recognized it. And the door was open and the current artist in residence was just sitting on her couch. She, she, yeah, I didn't, I, I almost went up and like said, okay, so I'll be living here. And then I thought, you will sound not good, not good. And so don't do that. So I like took pictures, but. That's like it's... the most meta book ever. <laughs> I know, I know it is. It is, it is about this You woman. should write a memoir <laughs> about the experience at the same time. <laughs> I was like, do I just write myself into the role? But sometimes I really hate the 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 true fiction memoirs where the, the author is the character. Ruth Ozeki got away with it. But yeah, it's it's hard to do. But yeah, it is very, very meta. I'm obsessed. Lala is so, so patient with me. Um, I'm going to get, you know, my, my cat. My cat is going to be named Edith, I'm sure. Yes. <laughs> I'm in love with her. And she, she was the, the biggest lesbian you ever saw. I'm going to send you some pictures. And I want to give her her happy story. Yeah, I love it. I love it. What is your um, process for delineating between the moments of truth and where you fictionalize story? Well, I've never done, I mean, with, with memoir, I try to stay as true as possible, but I have never fictionalized something that was based on a true story. And because I really want to use their names, I'm going to try to stick to actual happenings. Like mm-hmm. they were here then, this happened then. Somebody knows they said that. But then everything that we don't see, I can make up. You know, the whole time that Charles is in Europe, I can make up. The whole time that Edith from 19, you know, from the time her paintings are burned until her death, I get to make up. Yeah. Yeah. I'm very excited. I am It's like, do you know, every so often it feels like there's a really meaty project that we are just meant to do. And it feels like that, you know. It's it's handed to you. yeah. Yeah. My only my <sighs> only fear is that there's this one woman who is the like international expert on Edith and she just came out with a memoir last year. She's written a bunch of books about people, but she loves Edith. And my fear is that she's writing an Edith novel. What if what if I interview her and talk to her and she says that? I feel like I feel like it if would have to me, then I could fictionalize and my she says Edith. that. I could, you know, I could j- change her name, but well, I don't want to. Also um, you know, what if somebody fictionalizes or does a retelling of Romeo and Juliet? Huh? Uh, yeah, nobody's yeah, ever yeah. done that before. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You know, I wouldn't have to. Like, yeah, it's a small country. Yeah, it is a small country, but I think you know there are enough people doing the same story in a completely different way. Okay, I'm going and to. Has get... that woman ever written fiction? Never. She's very unlikely to do that. Then I'm going to. Um, use this conversation. I'm going to invite her to, obviously, to um, ink in your veins so that then we can become friends. And then I can confess my my dearest desire. So that's going to have to fit into what I'm doing. And this book in particular, I may try a couple of different methods to write because usually I'm a a sturdy show up and write and the book gets done. This may be like go away for a week and try to get 25,000 words at a time. Because I just, I don't know where else in my life it will fit. You know, I could, I could turn it into my 500 words in the morning, the 15 minutes in the morning, and that would get it done pretty quickly too. Um, I just have to come up with a little bit of a plot. I need Ellie's help because I don't really know the the current. Do you normally plot? Um, I need the tent poles. I need to know. I really, I have the tent poles. I have all the tent poles for the two characters for Charles and Edith, but I don't have, I know nothing really about this, this main character. You need to read yeah. Evelyn Hugo. Like I will. even if I will. even if like that isn't it might be a springboard for an idea, you know? Like it's Yeah, I can't do I can't do journal because the time will be different, but I am thinking like a mixture of uh letters, correspondence, and um diary. 
to, to springboard us back. So she finds that, reads that, and then we're flashing back. But if I do some kind of paranormal element, some kind of ghost or magical, even magical realism would be light enough, then it kind of even goes along with the seven, it sounds like the same book, but Seven Miracles of Beatrix Holland, which comes out next year. So it would still be queer, lightly paranormal. Like the seven letters of Edith Collier or something. <laughs> exactly, exactly. That yeah, might be too. Yeah. <laughs> I realize how much that sounds like the seven husbands now. <laughs> I hadn't thought about that. <laughs> But yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's oh. I'm very excited. I like, you know, when you feel the electricity around an idea and around a project, like that's what I'm getting. Yeah. And, and I'm excited had, for you. I'd had no fiction in mind. None. I've just been yeah. absolutely blank on fiction. Whenever anybody asks me, I just say, I don't know. I don't know if I want to again. I'm just going to wait and see if a book hits me in the face and then a book hit me in the face oh I love it so, I love that yeah. yeah I I sort of had the opposite problem in that I was trying to shoehorn my way into doing something in particular and then Ellie was like this is why you're not reading and I was like oh she was like you're reading what you think you need to be reading rather than what you really want to read and she was like and I think it's the same project a same problem for deciding what comes next and so she was like what book do you really want to write because I've you know I've got like a whole fucking spreadsheet list of ideas right. of stuff that I want to do and I was like I want to write the this book and I was like it's this meets that and she was like mm-hmm. she was and then she was like I keep hearing you say I can't do this I can't do that like that genre is this this genre you know blah 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 and she was like so what can you do and I was like well, I could write that book and she was like okay go on then <laughs> so does this change what plans you had made for the next few books to write um, I'm, I'm consistently going to be writing sapphic spicy romance yes. that has, that is fantasy. Does it change what the immediate series I was going to write next? Yes. I, I was going to do like, dragons and fae and shit. And then I'm like, no, fuck all of that off. I don't want to do that. Um, mm. I <laughs> Can't wait to hear. I feel like maybe I've told you something. I think maybe you already. have. I didn't know if you yeah. changed again. But yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. That I will tell you afterwards. But the but the the X meets Y, which was like, you know, my favorite things in childhood, um, mm -hmm. was something I wanted to do, but decided wasn't marketable enough. And I figured out a way to make it marketable. Which is exactly what you have done with the, anything you've done with Ruby Rose so far. You, you, exactly. It's what you do I want to do and how do I exactly. make it as to market as I can. So I have figured that out. Um, and now I am very excited. <laughs> yeah. I'm like desperate to get to like the the brainstorming and the outlining and the mid journeying and the murder boarding and all the rest of it. And as soon as I get there, I'll be like, oh, I hate this face. Like, what's what's the murder board? Oh, because like I print out a bunch of pictures and then like I stick them all up and then I like do post-it notes and like have arrows and lines. Oh, and, so it like, looks as like I'm, you're a serial yeah, killer. Yeah, like literally it look, I look like a serial killer and I'm like, no, I'm just making up lies for a living. Um, <laughs> you know? Okay, well, we can keep yeah. this episode short because I know you're tired and you have a lot to I do. Tell me what you want yeah. um, to do by the next time we talk. <sighs> by the time we talk at the end of October, I will have finished... The, well, the Kickstarter will have ended and will be very close to fulfillment, I think. Oh, my um, gosh. Amazing. I yeah. We, I will have finished the book yep. and it will be back from the editor and in the process of um, publishing. And I should be in like, I should have had a rest. And then I should be into like outlining and brainstorming all the rest of it, I think. Okay. That sounds like too much for four weeks, including the rest. Yeah. That sounds like a... Shit you have time. to remember, I'm not really doing the fulfillment on the Kickstarter, though. Right, 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 right. Okay. I'm just like, great. I'm just. Okay. No. I think we're a good overseeing. team for this because I would like to say by the end of next month, I'd still like to have finished the fix, which is what I said last time. But then I got really <laughs> distracted. <laughs> I said, to, to be fair, I got distracted once by a new book, but the other time I got distracted because I needed to spend a week on copy edits. So I lost a week there. Mm. So this came in out of nowhere. So, yeah, but it's close, done now. Close. It's done. I don't have to touch that book again. It's so great. Yes. You love yes. that. Yes. Yes. All right, my darling. Happy Bye. writing. Good yes, luck. Yes, and I'll to you. To you Bye. Bye. Don't forget to tune in and subscribe on your podcatcher. And when you have a moment, please leave a review.